large. Um, you're obviously a female ambassador yes. um, at the podium, which is great. But uh, less than 20% of the ambassadors at the State Department are women. So um, can you talk a little bit about any parallel efforts alongside the WGDP to advocate for um, support of female diplomats in the American diplomatic corps to advance to the highest levels? And well, then I have one more question. We're actually really proud here at the State Department that 44% um, of our workforce is female, that we continue to expand the diversity of, this, of, the, of the workforce here at the department. This is a priority for the secretary. I enjoy a, a wonderful amount of support and encouragement from him. He has been um, a wonderful boss for, for me personally. I have had three jobs in this administration, and each time I've had um, a, a, I've been really fortunate to serve. I think that um, we continue here at the department to work through a whole host of initiatives to promote diversity and inclusion in the department. And I would defer you to our um, Undersecretary for Management's office for more detail, and I know that there's a lot of information about those on our webpage. But I believe that with a 44 percent rate of, um, of, of women working here in the department, we're doing pretty well. And I like, when I, work, when I walk around and I work with my colleagues at my level, the assistant secretary level and my colleagues, I work with a number of incredibly strong, capable, and, and extremely hardworking women here at the department. And I'm honored to call them my colleagues. And I have a tremendous amount of support from my male colleagues, too. And can I ask you one more question? Sure. Um, with, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you talked about um, the pandemic, obviously, and um, you know, experts say that pandemics disproportionately affect women, female entrepreneurs. So what are some specific things that WGDP has done to morph its program and to provide extra support um, in the face of this economic challenge? Well, I'll pull back a little bit because one of the things when the pandemic hit and we started to realize the scope and scale of what um, was happening and to see the disproportionate impact that it was having on women in particular you know women in this country one in three women um, or one in three essential workers in this country are is a woman and we also before this pandemic the United States had the highest female per workforce workforce participation rate that we've had we had just done a tremendous job of bringing women into the economy and we saw it here in our own economy how women are facing growing challenges as a result of the pandemic and have been disproportionately affected. And we see this across the world as well. But one of the things that really bothered me personally and, and some of my colleagues here, when the pandemic began, we started to see a lot of the, the statements about this fact, about some of these facts, couched in terms of that placed women in a role of victims who were sitting waiting for somebody to come and save them. And I, so one of the first things we did was make sure that we were not talking about the situation in that way, that we were talking about how women will be the drivers of this recovery, that women are the critical frontline workers in this situation, and we need to make sure that we are doing everything we can to enable them. And then we sat and looked at what we had, um, how we had designed um, WGDP. And again, I came into this job in January, so the program was designed a year year before I showed up here in this job. But it's a tremendously well-designed program because what it does, by looking at the enabling environment, we are focused on how the how the barriers to women's participation can be removed so that women can be full participants in the economy and how they can drive prosperity and growth. So by we, we were able to use the tools that we have under WGDP and apply them to the current situation, I think, very effectively. We've expanded, we've continued to expand women's entrepreneurship support. You know, one of the biggest challenges for women is that they tend to work in the informal sector, especially in developing countries. And so you see that um, these, these sectors have been very hard hit, especially also service sectors, tourism dependent sectors. So we've really looked at how we can expand the entrepreneurship access to financing and the training and skills building skills building is going to be critical for women to be able to take advantage of new jobs and opportunities and to retool their own skills to be able to respond to the um, 
to the economic landscape as it evolves. So we're, we feel like we actually had a very well-designed initiative that was able to be applied directly to the current context without too much adjustment. Um, obviously, we've worked with some of the, some of the, um, some of the beneficiaries who were, who you heard about today, who have been doing some things to transform their own businesses to focus more on PPE or other service provision that they can do. And we've seen some really great stories around the world from some of our partners. But we've, the initiative itself is, is really such a great platform for us to be able to, to work through these issues. And it's, been a, it's great to have this tool already in our toolkit when this pandemic hit. Thank you very much. Thank you.